Greetings, geeks. Welcome to episode 614 of Geeks in Space. I'm Rob Commander Taco Malden. We are talking about the 1999 quote question mark mystery men classic. Hmm. Uh, I'm here today with Nate Ostendorp. Howdy. Rob Roseboom. Hello. And Krista Bona. Hi, and I can confirm we're streaming. Oh, good. It's all real. It's all happening, guys. It's all real. 1999. Uh, we've got, uh, this is earlier Ben Stiller, but like this is right as he's getting, like he's not quite Zoolander, right? Is Zoolander when, when he becomes giant? Uh, um, well, I mean, 2001, so it's two years later that Zoolander comes out. So, yeah. So we're we're near peak Stiller. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I, I feel, so my feelings on Stiller are complicated uh, because yeah. I absolutely love Tropic Thunder. Uh, yes. And Fantastic. I absolutely love Zoolander. Uh most other Ben Stiller, it's pretty hit or miss for me. I like him when he's a secondary character, like uh, Dodgeball. Dodgeball's great. Mm -hmm. Or the Tenenbaums. Yep. Tenenbaums is I great. I love Tenenbaums. Mm. Dodgeball. I never saw Blades of Glory. I guess I'm Tropic that. Thunder, he isn't my favorite character, but it, you know, it's a fine film. I absolutely Starsky and Hutch was not good. I detest yeah. Zoolander. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Is the, is it the world of fashion that you find offensive, Rob? No, I. For me, it's up there with Austin Powers. I hate both of those. I can't They're watch so Austin Powers. Stupid. Uh, I believe this movie came out basically the same time as Austin Powers Two. Uh, they were competing yeah. for for uh, cash at the box office. Uh, wow. I think, I think Austin Powers Two was a much funnier movie, but I can understand why you wouldn't like it. It was really hard to watch. Um, so, okay, uh, one quick note about this is what one of the things that just made me very happy about this movie is, uh, I'll just back right back up here because there's the, there's the Universal logo. Here's the title card for the movie. You know what this movie didn't have? It's a 37 credits, like 30 second, uh, you know, production by, produced by. I'm pretty sick of that now. Like it, you routinely have to skip through two and a half minutes of those now. So I respect that. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm going to be looking hard for things that I like about this, Chris. Oh, you had a hard time with this movie? I have a hard time with this movie. Okay. Uh, but uh, we uh, we uh, enter in and we get our first... I, I wouldn't even call it Waits a cameo here. No, yeah, he, no Waits he, is, he a, is character. a character. Mm -hmm. and, and I... I saw this and I had totally forgotten that Tom Waits was in this movie. And I was like, ah, oh, thank God, Tom Waits. Love that guy. And he's good. He is good. He's reliably funny. It's uh, funny. This is such a bimodal movie. You know, it's like there are moments where you're just like, this is a great movie. And then there'll be a moment where you're like, ah, oh, it's we really, you know? Well, anyway. the, the director of this yeah. movie had done a whole bunch of commercials. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I looked through the Wikipedia, but like it's random stuff you've heard of, but like nothing that would be like, yeah, like I think yeah. he did Got Milk or something like <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. For me, this movie is like someone watched The Tick, decided to try to make a movie out of that and wasn't as successful as the animated show. Right, but, not as successful as yeah. Venture Brothers, who also saw the tick and said, "I will yeah. do that," but did it better. <laughs> but it, but it has points. Oh, for sure. Yep. I was describing this movie to, to my wife, and she was like, "That's okay. You can watch this one on your own." And <laughs> um, and and she's like, "You know what this smells like? This smells like everyone was kind of high, and they were in between movies, and so they just sort of threw something together in the corner of a lot, I, and did it." I think and, you're describing the Adam Sandler yeah. Yeah. <laughs> production system. Well, this well movie... I think that this is not unlike that. It's like, you know, you have like William H. Macy, and then you have, you know, yeah. It's... This movie. And like this, this director is a perfect example. He did two Nissan commercials, <laughs> Mystery Men, and two Volvo commercials, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Well, this is, this is supposed to be very loosely based on uh, what is it? The flaming carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is sort of a surreal comic 
about a superhero who's, I mean, just kind of weird. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I, to think that this is based on that, I just, I imagine it's like a, a, a game of operator, you know, where the writer <laughs> comes out and then it goes through eight different filters of suits at whatever studio right. made this. And then this is what came out at the end. I think you're you're yeah. spot on right because it had a different name attached in Ben Stiller's role. And then they cast Ben, Janine Garofalo was cast and she got Stiller in. So he came in and did a rewrite and then decided he was, I think, gonna originally be the shoveler uh, mm -hmm. or amazing. So he, and then he switched to a different character. Uh, so yeah, like the movie was made for one thing and then they shifted it uh, tremendously yeah. right at the end. Uh, well, did you see this quote in uh, in IMDb from the director? Uh, according to Hank Azaria, quote, I'm going back to commercials when this is done. I've had enough. I'd rather I do my cool little one minute shorts than deal with all this nonsense. And I'm like, yeah, you can see it on screen. You can see absolutely that on screen. Yeah, I mean, so this is this is my executive summary here. I think that basically every performance in this movie is awesome. And I think nobody has any chemistry with anybody else at any point. <laughs> like everybody is like, if you green screened them out and like watched them alone, they yeah. are funnier than as a group, almost to I a feel, fault. I feel like Macy steals this movie. Oh, yeah. His yep. character yep. is fantastic. And he's he's a wonderful. Actor. No, and and it's the deadpan. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it really does it. Wow. And the earnestness, you know, it's just, he's great. Let's keep going. Yep, 514. This is you, Chris. Oh, We've been waiting me. for oh. you this whole time. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So the thing, you see the on the right of the Blue Raja, where the forks are? Uh -huh. That's a proper silver set roll up so when you buy silver at least in the old days uh they would come with these little cloth pockets that you could put them in and they wouldn't tarnish when they were inside them so i thought that they put that into the costume was kind of wonderful wow you know well okay the i guess we should just introduce it you got the shoveler you got ben stiller as mr furious and you got the blue raja they're going to yeah. save the day but nope captain amazing is going to do it greg kinnear who yeah. just stepped down from the soup right like he quit the soup to be on this <laughs> paving the way for joel McHale's career yeah. uh and also the i think the nascar badging thing is again this movie is filled Genius. with yeah. great no. ideas yep. that's apropos mm-hmm and he, again... And having Ricky Jay as his agent, it's just... Every single casting in this movie is fantastic. Like, it's I feel genius. like in a lot of ways, this movie, to me, the casting of this feels like, I'm going to use a weird phrase, old money. Everybody in this is like people who've been in other things before. Mm -hmm. They all had recognition, yep. you know, coming in. There's. It's not like... Uh, so many of the big budget comedies that come along in the two right. thousands, where they're like they're like the the second tier of Saturday Night Live at best, and then Will Ferrell. <laughs> yeah, nobody here was like, we need new blood. We need, you know, the hottest thing. Everyone is like, give us journeyman actors. Yeah, and like for every role, like the head yeah. of the frat boys is Michael Bay, the head of the rappers is CeeLo Green. I'm like, what? Yeah. what? They were just not busy this weekend. You know, it's so weird. Well, and I think that you see that this is this is something that Ben Stiller especially incorporates into his shtick uh, then throughout the 2000s where he has kind of his run of really good movies. Yeah. Those like casting Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder, things like that. He knows the power of like yeah. filling up the, the, the tertiary parts with yeah. unexpected names. It's fun. Yeah, it's super this, fun. This uh, bit is an example of where I feel like the movie hits kind of hits its stride. The, this is where they're uh, listing ridiculous villains. And I just <laughs> chaos got the chair. Really? Casanova Frankenstein is locked up in a nut house. I, I also want to say uh, when I see the henchman there, I had him uh, paused. I got a pause. Uh, we're going to get the get the block. Uh, I had this paused uh, a shot of him and I thought that I had paused you, Chris. <laughs> so I apologize, <laughs> but but in a very small thumbnail window, uh, there, I'm, I'm there, Ricky J to you. There is That's there true. are some similarities at a, at a squinting distance, so I apologize. <laughs> I need I need to be bushier. Yeah, for sure. Um, this movie, oh, <laughs> Casanova Frankenstein. 
which I think is a great name. name. It's a great name and a great actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you get him to play the cheesy villain? Yeah, I think you back a dump truck of money up because this uh, movie had a it. huge budget for the time. Yeah. I'm yeah, pretty sure which, they paid him. Which which wasn't special effects. Let, <laughs> let, let, let's be frank on that. Um, I I just liked that they are watching commercials in their diner booth, uh, you know, which is very futuristic. And yeah, I don't know. Just uh, you don't actually have to play it, but they're advertising mighty whitey toothpaste. Yeah. Uh, Hi, you know. Everybody. You know, tooth decay and gingivitis can be a crime. Why I use Mighty Whitey Toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's great. It's good. <laughs> the spot they got sponsors for Superman in this movie. That's yeah. great. I love this line. I'm so glad you found it. <laughs> That's because Lance Hunt is Captain Amazing. Oh, there don't there start go. that again. Lance Hunt wears glasses. <laughs> Captain Amazing doesn't wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> But the, the thing is, man, the movie has like 15 parts that are that funny. But yeah. <sighs> yeah. The, well, and to be clear, the other thing about this movie, I'm looking at it right now, two hours, one minute, 26 seconds. You chop 30 minutes out of this movie and it's probably a keeper. Yeah. And, and like Claire Filani as the love interest Oof. is completely unconvincing. Like Ben Stiller literally ha couldn't have less chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Tom Waits had more chemistry with the old lady, you know? Yeah, I felt bad uh, the how glued in that plot line is. Oh, oh yeah. I freaking love this line. <laughs> God gave me a gift. I shovel well. I shovel very well. <laughs> <laughs> and William H. Macy will go on to be in 1,000 roles that we will see him in. But to me, <laughs> he's, he's the shoveler. Yeah. He will he shovel so, very well. He is so earnest. <laughs> you know, it just, He's great. It's fantastic. And, and look at his career before and after this. It's yeah. like it did. He didn't take any hit at all for this movie. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> and he's in a lot of really quirky films too. Oh yeah, no, he's it's great. Yeah. So I, th this is a dialogue bit that I love. Oh, that's right. He's the narrator on Curious George. I forgot. That. <laughs> he's everywhere. He's great. So spoo. I just absolutely love that his training, I'm coming spoon, his training is puns. <laughs> red eyes, red eyes, red eyes. What a treat. We weren't expecting to see you again, so spoon. Every, you gotta train your puns? Ugh, he's horrible. Yeah, but I, I still like Hank Azari. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So do I. He's great. And he switches then to get out of his <laughs> stupid accent. <laughs> oh. Are you in the marijuana? Cheesing me off right now. Just please, good night. You're cheesing me off. He's such a nerd. So Just the, the way she's kind of peering up, yeah. you know, from behind the door, like it's it's great. She's charming. Uh, I feel this disco ball uh, seems too big. I just that worried me. No, no, there's there's big ones. I believe it, but that seemed too big. I didn't like it. And then we get the disco guys. <laughs> yep, disco boys with Eddie Izzard. Yeah. Uh, did we have a Eddie Izzard? Right? I know that's that's a great role for Eddie. A great Izzard. get. Yeah, it's perfect. Just perfect. Uh, the one thing that I did kind of realize is that this movie is really heavily leaning into all the disco stuff, right? Uh, and I was, I, I kind of had a weird moment of realization as I'm halfway through this when I realized that this movie to us is as old as disco was to this movie when it was made. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so Nate, I put my comments in your section. I don't know if you had one there already. No, I, I didn't, so. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, you can play this for nine seconds. Or well, we've whatever. always been each other's greatest nemesis. Is nemesis. What? What's the plural on that? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the thing is, Lance is not very bright, and and Greg Kinnear pulls that off wonderfully. For sure. Mm -hmm. But I kind of, I kind of. 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Player. little gizmo. It's really quite cool. <laughs> yeah? What, what, what is it? <laughs> and then he goes, Ah, oh, dang! <laughs> yeah. it's a Again, right, every performance in this movie is it's awesome. so much fun, you know? But I gotta hear it. Nope. Play it for two more seconds. Chloroform deploying portable enticement snare. Ah, dang! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good time. Ah, dang! You know, Ben Stiller in a lot of his movies, he gets to play the weirdest guy. Uh, it's it's, but I think he's definitely better when he plays the most normal guy in his movies. One time. John, get down! <laughs> So, I, I feel like Sally would be my nomination as Rob's favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> she, she is pretty oh, fantastic. John and, and and they always use the, the fish eye lens with her or yep. something. It's so much fun. John Kit! Oh, did I ever shoot 29 12? Uh, battle, Jimmy. Oh no, I had this one. Oh, 29 45. Zen's uh, next. Yeah, I was just going to say. You know, they should have led with this. This should have been the very first shot in the movie. Yep. And the movie should be all about how they're trying to restore it. <laughs> because I would drive that thing to the mailbox mm -hmm. to get the mail every day. I yeah. would come up with reasons to drive <laughs> that around the neighborhood. Look yeah. at how magnificent that is. The Herkimer. The Herkimer Battle Jitney. Best non-lethal weapon ever made. <laughs> Champion City's best-known billionaire, Lance Hunt, has disappeared. That was Hank Azaria. Yes, it was. That's what I wanted to say. All right. <laughs> All right, we get to, uh, let's see, some flashes to Frankenstein. The team is now has to go on adventures, and they have to fail so that we can see what the, is stacked up against them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they don't even make it through the front door. Yeah, they're bad at this. Mm -hmm. Then they gotta go have uncomfortable small talk. Ugh. No chemistry. Well, that's the thing is that, like, the point of the movie is that he's like such a jerk that he has to learn how to calm down and be himself in order to yeah. like make be tolerant. But he does not pull that off at all. No woman would be pining for that, you know. It's like let someone else train him. Th this is a total throwaway line in the movie. I, I just <laughs> I love it. It's like. Go ahead and Dad, play. Go to my room with three strange men. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Go into my room with three strange men. That's a good one. It's very satisfying. And his power is great too. So, so here's again, the part yeah. where they, they go over the, you know, they already went through the awesome super villain names and now they're going over the superhero names like the pickled and princess headbutt <laughs> white <laughs> flight and black menace yeah, I i'm just like oh for the writers of this like can you imagine like it was probably a day where they just sat around yep. Yep. all and just yep. made giant lists of superhero names that would be so much fun i feel yeah. like if you buy ben edland a beer and sit at a table with him that's what this is what falls out of his face White flight and the black menace, they work together. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that was my favorite one. <laughs> they work together. Now, timing yeah. wise, is this is this part of the Pee Wee Herman comeback tour, or is this in the midst of when he was Oh, so that's a good question. This is this from my memory was the first time I had seen Paul Rubin since he uh, got theatered. Yeah. Uh, I think this <laughs> was since he tube into a theater. The first thing he did after, remember the very first thing he did was the MTV Video Music Awards where he walks out, everyone's laughing and he says, so has anyone heard any good jokes lately? <laughs> Which I thought was fantastic way right? to deal with that PR nightmare. Yep. You know? Oh, wait a second, let's see now. Oh yeah, the spleen. Yeah, wow. 
and and this, it's not a good character. It's no, not. Funny. It's not. I it's mean, not very funny. I think, but, I think Paul but, Rubens is a great actor. Exactly, but, it's Paul Rubens. Uh, I, so this I feel like is the, this I feel like is the the visual montage for you know the uh, like you know for the equivalent of the dialogue for White Flight and Black Men. Sure. Like yeah, you know we've just got. Just I mean, got the crappiest superheroes at a pool. You gotta party. love the adult baby right in the yeah. corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, this is this is the centerpiece of the movie. Like when I yeah. think back about this movie, this is the scene that I think about. Like the whole pool scene through Janine Garofalo's introduction. This is this yep. to me is the center of Mystery Men, uh, for all its flaws. Uh, but uh, are we gonna run the? Oh, no. It go. looks like it's five seconds. <laughs> I don't deserve this. I know. I know. God, he's too good for this movie. He is. So yeah, they have to have auditions. Uh, the Waffle Man. But like everybody's like people you know. Yeah. I just had to call out when uh, when Doug Jones came out. Came out. Yeah. I mean, he's Doug Jones. He's pencil man. Not wearing something covering his face. Yeah. What do you mean? I don't have to spend seven hours in a makeup chair before you film me? I mean, I love think of movie. how what a relief this was for him. Right. You know, all he has to do is put some pencils on his chest and he walks away. So. Oh, we get... I actually, I, I thought she was good in this role. Yeah. I, so I, I could count on one hand with fingers to spare the number of roles where I like Janine Garofalo in. Yeah. And... I, I like her in this movie. Like this one is is just very appropriate. And this uh, bowling ball sequence is one of uh, is a pretty. I mean, ninety nine CGI. Uh, yep. They're making they're making good use of the effects. And what I will say again is we've seen a lot of movies on this uh, this here show where they don't know how to use the special effects. This movie is doing a pretty good job of being frugal, used but yep. also using CG where it helps. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of like more classical kind of miniature work uh, and just old school, let's blow some stuff up. Uh, mm -hmm. I can respect that. That's all right. Uh, but yeah, I, this that the whole uh, uh, bowling ball scene is kind of the center of the movie for me. I guess I'll just have to take my ball and go home. <laughs> Good for her. I was glad that uh, uh, she gets her dad back, or her, that gets the bowling ball yeah. back at the end. It was nice. Yeah. Uh, I would also like to point out now that we are like two thirds of the way through our notes, and we are only forty five minutes of this in, the way into this movie, and yep. there's a very good reason for that, which is yeah. that this movie kind of sucks for most of the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's it's watchable you know i guess that's what you can say about it so the part about this is i really actually actively dislike mr furious's character i don't he's not good he's no. not funny he's just dumb and 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 then they do things to make him seem dumber or charming or funny and it's just not funny like when play it do yourself a favor don't punch my clock because i'm a pantera's box you do not want to open and it's like I get it. Yep. It's you know everyone knows it's Pandora's box. Even an idiot like this wouldn't call out an '80s band name. It's anyway. It's lazy this writing. It's not good. But what it's, I will say, I think that this shot uh, is actually <laughs> really great. It's a good one. <laughs> Just Pound slap it in the car. The, the Corvette. The Corvette limo. The Corvette limo is genius. <laughs> but then he like is tr he tries to peel off. The <laughs> he tries to peel off. The <laughs> That is funny. The yeah. That is funny. And but again, that just shows how impotent he is, you know. It's... Well, uh the from uh my brief research on this, uh there was a lot of improv on the set. Uh the characters oh, trying oh, to Oh, oh, you think. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. trying to trying to juice up their characters a little bit. I mean, sure. You you can't write material this good. Right? <laughs> Look at that. You can't plan it. <laughs> The watermelon on my face. The slow pan is nice. Yeah. I don't remember telling you to do that. 
<laughs> they were high. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I marked this one off uh, uh, as the first occurrence of copy strike music. Yeah. That's as yeah, much as I dare. I, I prefer the song of the original Air Mag. <laughs> you going to do it? Oh, uh, no. Ah, who, who dares read it? The uh, line that I appreciated in that was the. Uh, I am not the sharpest cutting implement in the storehouse. <laughs> <laughs> it did sound deep. So here's Heller. This is the the first uh, first time we meet him as a character, and you know Tom Waits does a very serviceable job. It's not it's not yeah noteworthy, yeah. but like it's, I like Tom Waits, so it's a little punny for my taste. Yep. But uh, he's having yeah. fun. Well, well. We, we come in peace. We come in peace. Oh, good. Let's stop the scene. I'm gonna stop the movie for a few minutes so he can walk the girl home, and you lose total interest in everything. I I love the suits, the furriers, yeah. the frat boys. Right. Yeah. The frat boys still on probation. Yep. Always <laughs> dressed to kill. This this uh, shtick is something that uh, I, I was actually thinking a lot about dodgeball, you know, with another Ben Stiller yeah. thing. But they do the same thing, right? You can have little teams of silly people in a matching costume, and you can yeah. have that is a endlessly mineable source of comedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably That's one really that you good. don't do as often anymore. <laughs> yeah, until dodgeball two. Ooh, oh. you remember the the four D's of dodgeball, right? Mm-hmm. Duck dodge something and dodge <laughs> i just wanted to say wrong switch i enjoyed this yeah know? oh yeah that is a good, good he's switch. like calling him he's like you idiots you morons <laughs> you're you're gonna kill me and then he dies flip the switch yeah and they call it back like a minute later a couple minutes later they they, they call it back good on him like <sighs> This is one of those things, man. This is, you, you just wish that some, a better editor or some good script doctor went in first and we could have had something real special. Or just not. <laughs> oh, wait, did we have one at 120 here? Um, 126.32. Gonna go forward a whole bunch. Lena Olin as the henchman. That's a yeah, just play this. These belong to your great great grandmother. I was saving these for your wedding day, but from the looks of it, that day is probably a long way off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love how loving and realistic his mother is. Yep. <laughs> yep. And she sees his need and his skill yep. and respects him for it, gives him the family heirlooms. Yep. It's. <laughs> I mean. Yes, you are a freak, and no one will ever love you, but you're my freak. So yeah, have I the good it. silverware. Yep. yep, I have these really nice forks that you may use for your stupid thing. <laughs> and, and, yep. and it's worth pointing out, when he throws the fork at Casanova Frankenstein or whatever, and he says, you're going to hit me with a fish fork? It's actually a fish fork. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, okay. They did that Somebody just knew you. their cutlery. So here's our right stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got to have it. There were, somebody on YouTube has to have like a montage of like every parody yeah. of that thing that's ever been done. Because that, I, I don't know, that trope to me, anywhere you can do that, anywhere that goes, I'm in. I, I love that. The Herkimer rides. Yep, yeah, there's something called... Sorry, go ahead. No, oh, go ahead. Well, there is a slow motion walk montage. Oh, good. On 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 YouTube, I'll I'll send it to the channel. And it 
looks like she's ordered the lobster. <laughs> I just love that line. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. There's a still. Oh, it's a thirty-six, thirty-six. Okay, stop. Okay, so he's basically in the John Travolta pose. Yep. And he's saying, "Into the disco room." <laughs> it's just like, like Jeffrey Rush, your timing <laughs> and your form is perfect. You uh-huh. are too good for this. It's really true. Why don't you just go be a 30. pirate monster? Yeah. <laughs> This is just funny. So, of course, he's. You should put some shorts on or something if you want to keep fighting evil today. (laughs) It's just a cute little movie, you know? So. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. He's upgraded. (laughs) Yep. I, I like that he Broke has a up. sidearm. You don't see it yep. until that point. Broke out the garden shovel. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that is that is a moment that I've always remembered from the first moment I saw this movie. And it's like William H. Macy, you know, he's he's just about to go down. He's he's on the defense, but sidearm. You know, it's like trowel. <laughs> and it's a trowel because he's a shoveler. It's a, <laughs> it's a tiny shovel. It's no different it's really than using the little salad forks and the well the fish fork. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going back to graduate school. That was the agreement. We're doing it. We're <laughs> <laughs> it's good times. And the other the other scene I always remembered was the the nail attack scene with the camera. Mm. So this is yeah. commitment to the let, bit. It, let it play. <laughs> That's all. It's yeah, commitment, man. To get the strike, but yeah, it was. Oh, we're gonna get it for uh, like two spots where we ran about eight seconds over. So mm. it's so unfair. And, you know, you got to protect the interests of the the big business. I mean, if we don't think about the needs of the copyright holders, <laughs> who will? Yeah, I mean, it's not like this movie lost sixty-eight million dollars. They could lose <laughs> right? sixty-seven nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars if we. So much more. We already we already, uh, we already did this. Good explosions. down evil with the mighty sword of teamwork and the hammer of not bickering. We are number <laughs> <laughs> this victory to go out to all the other guys, and I'm talking about the people in this city who are super good at their jobs but never get any credit. <laughs> so it's like, it's a good moment. The you know, I, I like him. The school the lady nurse. at the DMV. That's a tough job. That's a tough job, and He's she earnest. does her job well. He's earnest. He's such an he's such an everyman, you know. Yeah, Just he's like, great. That was our last note, gentlemen. Uh, I don't know. That one doesn't hold up for me. It's not uh, at the mm. peak of the oeuvre of the Ben Stiller. You're more of a dodgeball guy. I but I'll, I I like I likes me dodgeball. I likes me Zoolander, and I likes me Tropic Thunder. I think those are. Three just really, really fun, dumb movies. But Tropic Thunder, I think, is kind of next level good. Uh, and I think the other two are just yeah. funny. Well, and Tom Cruise steals Tropic Thunder for me. Yeah, he does. So. But that's another one where Ben Stiller goes all in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think that works. The yeah, best. no, this movie definitely has its point. Yep. I, you know didn't really like this movie a whole lot when it came out and i think i enjoyed it much more this time around because i knew what it was about and knew what to expect so yeah indeed but i love the shoveler yeah i think uh, i think that there could have been five good youtube short five minute videos out of this it would have been better but i, I also think a good editor could have gone through and maybe taken out uh the love plot uh, you know, and trim this thing down to like a tight 85 minute movie and it would have been a lot funnier, but you know, 
I do. I, I also really like that this does sort of exist in that weird gulf between the modern comic book superhero movie, mm -hmm. uh, like the let, this comes out right before X Men, right yeah. right before Spider Man, Spider Man reboot. Right. This this one. is if anything, this leans in harder to the Adam West Batman or the Joel Schumacher Batman than pretty much anything else. Uh, that that you know is in in comic booky superhero type movies. Uh, and you know when it when I would really like to see this movie, and this is this this is gonna sound dumb. I would like to see this movie essentially remade now, uh, but now with an audience that has like the modern era of comic book tropes. I think you could probably do a really funny movie, but you would probably animate it and make it for eleven year olds now. Ah, uh, maybe. Whose turn is it for next week? Robert, it's mine. Yes. Ooh. What is the word? Um, well, since we've been doing so many more modern movies, I had a bunch of things pop up into my head. But in the end, I think I'm going to go back to one I was going to pick a while ago. One of the most unjustly maligned comedies of all time. We're going to do it, Chris DeBona. We're watching Joe versus the Volcano. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Bum, it's bum, such a good bum, movie. Bum, bum, I bum, love bum, this do, movie. Do, do, <laughs> it's so good. It is. It's so good. And when I go and read, when I look to see like its score on Metacritic and other places, like I don't get it. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like they are watching a different movie than I am. People I think, are broken and awful. Yeah. That's what you learn. We'll talk more about this next week, but I think this is the first and only maybe movie that I ever walked out of in a theater. Whoa, you're a monster. And I watched it again six months ago and was wrong. It's a great movie. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Gentlemen, until next week, Nato Stenorp. Very well. Rob Roseboom. See ya. Chris DeBona. Bye. Fare thee well, gentlemen. I'm Rob Commander Taco Malda, and we will see you on Friday with some news, if you're lucky.